Okay, let's see what this front end looks like. So let's see how cold it is. I feel like it's at room temp now. We had some heat in earlier, but that was like an hour or two ago. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take this top tree nuts off, or loosen up this top one here, and see what it looks like. Let's see if all that work was worth it, or I just wasted time. I'll give it 50 50. Mm. Damn. And that got tight. Alright. Put it down on the ground. Okay. Purposely not undo those pinch bolts because I don't want to move anything. That matters. I want to see what's going to happen here. Okay, so right now I still got the lower nut in here, here. So you can see that it's still there, but that's because I haven't pulled the bottom nut out. So now I got to figure out how I'm going to get this bottom nut out because there's no room to get in here with anything. So don't think I can do what I wanted to do because I didn't want to loosen these up and move this up to get the nut off. I'm going to see if I can get a little pair of channel locks or something like that. It's not tight per se. It's just if it's under a load condition, it's tight. But if it's, if it's centered like it should be, it shouldn't be tight. All right. Let's try our little channel locks here and see what happens. Channel locks pinches your finger when they come off. I got load on it. Ah! Across those fingernails. Feels good. In case you think I'm not yanking on it pretty good, I can't hold a fork. And that's really jammed in there now. Ah. 
longer. I can't quite everything. Get it down on the floor. Tight. Should be just about all the way. <sighs> Hard right the last thread. Start this a little bit. All right, finally. Whew. That was a workout. All right. All right. Now I can see what happened. Ugh. What happened was I got hot. Hot and humid night. 75 in here, but it's hot. Humid. Okay, look at the tree. Or the stem, I should say. So now, if you look at it, it's pretty center now. Remember, it was way over this way before, so it did work. So it did, it is tweaked over a little bit right here. So there's nothing holding the stem, it's just sitting there now. Before, it would be really hard to get this thing to go in there because it was problem see now you're going right it's going right in there right now it goes about that far and stops but it went in that deep see it goes right on in there pulls right in like it's supposed to and I got the torque on these bolts which was this is supposed to squeeze this nut here also so it's not it's not just as tight for alignment. It's it's like these bolts are actually pinching on this a little bit right now. But you can see that went right in there like it's supposed to. So that's good. Now if I undo those pinch bolts, it'll probably get a lot easier. All right. See now, I'm not fighting now because I took the pinch off. It didn't move up and down, but I'm not pinching on it either now. I could have probably helped did that earlier, but I didn't want to. I wanted to fight it. I did. So that goes all the way up. That one goes all the way down. Tree hasn't moved yet, it's still where it belongs. So yeah, I could have I guess I could have took the bolt torque off a little bit, but yeah, whatever. It is what it is. I don't always do the easiest thing in the world, I just do good stuff. So anyway, so it went in there by hand just by you know it goes down until it touches now, so it unscrews. And the shoulder goes in now like it's supposed to. Alright, so it worked. We now have a tree that fits in there like it's supposed to. Just lower that. There's the lower nut. See, you can see it rotating in there. All right, so that one did like it's supposed to. Now, that tree right there still doesn't work though. So now we get to determine what's wrong with that. 
I'm going to get these the rest away here. Precision fit. Aftermarket pile of crap. Still no way it's going to go in there. So like I said, to make this work, I'm going to have to bore these holes out a little bit. Off way down out of there. <clears throat> I'm gonna come up off the center bolt here. Maybe we can determine which side is off. Just equally off. Hard to tell with the camera light. Trying to look through the camera is not the same as using your eyeballs. Trying to go on that side. I feel like it's trying to go in there. Pretty equal. We're just trying to go but not making it. Okay, so what we want to do is measure the side. Of the so if you measure the side to side of your fork, like this, you just zero it. Do it again. Okay. So I zeroed the caliper. Let me go in here like this and measure what it is here. It's 19 thousands negative. So the negative goes inward. So you got about 19 thousands. Too narrow. So to make this work, I got to put in the metal machine and offset the hole, each hole over about ten thou, and it'll slip down like it's supposed to. So I'm going to measure the inside and see if that's a good number or not on that way. And I zeroed it that way. I'm going to go measure this and see if I can measure this at all. It's not, you're not really measuring it exactly the right thing here because you got the slot in the way. You can't really measure that. So we're 23 that way. About 11 thou that way. So I don't think the problem's on the inside. I think it's on the outside. So the next thing is to measure the hole. These are 1047. That's pretty big. 
thought these things were one inch. One inch twenty four. So one inch twenty four is what they are. Twenty three twenty four. They are not one inch. Thought they were. So these are bigger by twenty thou already than what they need to be. They're already twenty five thou bigger. They work fifties. So we're gonna have to go another ten thou per side to make this work. Or when you beat this thing down, you're with a big hammer, it's going to have to squeeze the fork. I don't want to do that. So, what I'll do, I'll put these in the metal machine, center this up, move it over, and I'll cut the downer down to the 1024 like it's supposed to be, 1025 instead of being 1050 like these are. I'll move it over that tenth hour or so. I'll double do my measurements, and then this will probably fit. But right now it doesn't. Now, I'm not going to use this though, so. But this doesn't even fit a Harley one because I checked on two other ones. It doesn't fit, you know. So this is just made wrong. So I'll make it so it at least fit a Harley fork if we want to use it. I just won't. Because I'm going to use a stock one. But at least now the stem lines up like it's supposed to. So that's a big plus. So that part has been corrected. Yeah, I didn't kill the bearing down here too bad. But I will not re I will not be reusing that bearing anyway. But just in case, I could if I wanted to. And we need to do is put some spray on this because we heated it up pretty good. I can't have a spray for squat. Actually, I probably should do a spray of the whole fork. That's what this is for. Stop rust, see? A valuable fork. You can afford to spend a couple bucks for spray. Makes a nice mess on the floor too. That's okay. Nice and slippery. There we go. Yeah, up under there, right there. Okay. She's well lubed. Protective coat. So that fork is good to go for now. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I know what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to use that chrome front leg on there. I'll guarantee you that. And those chrome rock arms, I'm not using those either. And chrome springs, eh, I'll blast the paint black. So they should be anyway. But uh, well, that look pretty good. So anyway, it's not an original fork because the stem's not right. But at least you can put it on a bike now. At least now it will work on a bike. Before it would not. And the nice part is I can see it's olive drab fork now. See the spray brings out the green paint on it. I like that part. Alright, that's it for that. One tuned up Springer.